How you doing everybody? My name is Peter and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a second video on the basics of making a mobile first person shooter in Unity. We've already seen how to make a first person controller and today we're focusing on the shooting. I'm saying the very basics because this is a very broad topic and I'm giving you a general idea upon which you can expand. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. So, let's say this is how your game looks. We're gonna have, for reference, a crosshair in the middle, the gun in the bottom right corner and just next to it, the fire button. In the hierarchy, we'll have the camera be a child of the player object and it will have two children. The first one will be the graphics of the camera, so our 3D model, for example, and the fire point, which will indicate where the bullets will be spawning from when shooting. Lastly, for optimization reasons, we'll not be instantiating a new bullet for every shot, but instead we'll be taking them from a pool of pre-spawned game objects every time the player desires to shoot. When we press the fire button, the bullets will be activated, removed from the bullet pool and positioned at the fire point with some velocity, and when they hit an obstacle or a target, or some time has passed, we will be deactivating them and putting them back in the pool. So we'll have a bullet pool object in the scene that will be keeping track of available bullets. The code that we're gonna write will be divided in three scripts, one for the weapon, one for the bullet, and one for the bullet pool. Let's get started. In the bullet pool class, we're gonna declare a public static bullet pool reference, which we'll be using to get the main bullet pool of the scene. We're also declaring two public fields, the game object, which will store the prefab for the bullet we're gonna use, and an integer, which will represent the size of our pool. We're also gonna declare a private list of type bullet, which will contain all the available bullets that the player can use. In the awake method, we're only gonna initialize the main bullet pool, setting it to the instance that is calling the method. In the start method, we're gonna initialize available bullets as a new list of type bullet, and in a for loop, we're gonna add as many bullets as we declared in pool size to the list. First, we're gonna instantiate them, then we're gonna deactivate them to avoid them colliding with each other during the process and then we are adding them to the list. The last two methods that we'll be adding to the class will be for drawing bullets from the pool and adding them back. Pick from pool will accept two arguments, one vector tree for the position and one vector tree for the velocity that the bullets will be instantiated with. In this body we'll be first checking that the available bullets has at least one element then we are activating the first element of the list and then removing it. The dot activate the bullet dot activate function will be defined in the bullet class that we will see in a moment. The add to pool method will be used instead for adding bullets back to the list. It accepts one bullet argument and if it's not yet contained in the available bullets list, it will add it to the list. The first of these two methods will be called from the weapon script when shooting and the second one will be called from the bullets when hitting a target. The bullet class will be quite simple, will require a rigid body component to which we'll have a public reference and also we'll have a public float to indicate how much time the bullet will stay alive in the scene before deactivating itself. The activate method will accept the position and the velocity both in form of a vector tree and we'll set the transform position to position and the rigid body's velocity to velocity. And it sounds like it makes sense. Then we'll set the game object to active and we'll start a coroutine for decaying the object over time. The decay coroutine looks just as simple, it will only wait for lifetime seconds to be passed and then we'll deactivate the bullet. The deactivate method will simply add the bullet back to the pool, stop all the running coroutines and set the active state of the object back to false. The last method we're gonna add to the bullet class is onTriggerEnter. This will be called when the collider that we will be having on the bullet object will collide with any other object in the scene. And here is where you wanna put all the code that is need to be run when a bullet hits something, whether it is damaging the enemies, exploding something in the scene, or anything else. For the sake of the tutorial, we're just gonna log a message to the console and deactivate the bullet. The weapon class is a bit more complex, but not so much, so bear with me. We'll have a reference to the bullet pool and to the cameras and the fire points transform. We'll also have a float 
called firepower which will determine the speed of the bullets and we'll have a bull and two floats to determine the state of the weapon. His shooting will tell us if the player is uh, holding or not the shoot button. Fire speed will be the rate at which bullets are shot from the gun and fire timer will be used to calculate how much time has passed from one shot to another. In the start method we'll just get the reference to our main bullet pool to avoid doing so every time we shoot. We'll have a public void shoot function which will calculate the velocity for the bullet by multiplying the forward direction of the camera by the firepower and then we'll pick one bullet from the pool and activate it at the fire point position with the calculated velocity. Now we'll see the two functions that will be called when interacting with the fire button pull trigger when we press it and release trigger when we lift the finger off the screen. For the way I implemented pull trigger, if the fire speed is positive, his shooting will be set to true when the button is pressed, allowing a continuous fire from the gun with a delay of fire speed between one shot and the next. If fire speed is equal to or less than zero, then the player will be able to shoot as fast as they can press the button. When lifting the finger off the screen and releasing the trigger, we'll just be setting his shooting to false and fire timer to zero. Lastly, let's take a look at how the automatic mode and timer are implemented. In update, if is shooting, we'll check each frame if fire timer is greater than zero. If so, we will decrease it by time dot delta time. If not, we'll just reset the timer by setting fire timer to fire speed and call the shoot function. Now, let's go back to the editor and see how the scene is set up. Here we are, you can see that the structure of the player object is the same that I've shown you before and you have to notice that the muzzle, being a child of the camera, is also slightly shifted on the z-axis in front of the camera. This is in order to have the projectiles spawn in front of a player and not behind it or in its head. To set up the weapon we can really attach the script to any object and I'm attaching it to the player because it's where I also have the first person controller that I'm using and we can just set up everything in the inspector so the camera transform goes to fp camera the muzzle goes to the fire point firepower i'm giving it a default value of 10 and fire speed i'm setting 0.2 seconds hoping that it works you can also see that i set up a simple ui with the crosshair in the center of the screen and a small fire button in the bottom right corner but we're not going to use the button component, instead we'll be using the event trigger component that will give us access both to the on pointer down and the on pointer up events that will tell us when the player is clicking or releasing the finger from the button. We now need to add two listeners for the on pointer down and on pointer up events and add the two functions pull trigger and release trigger from the weapon script to these. To create the bullet pool just add a new empty object to the scene, rename it what you want and add the bullet pool component. Now I set the default size of 100 and before adding the reference to the bullet prefab, I'm gonna create it. For this example, I'm just gonna create a sphere that I'm gonna scale down and apply an emissive material to. Then I'm gonna add the bullet component, set the sphere collider as a trigger, disable gravity for the rigid body because I want the bullet in this example to travel straight and then set the reference to the rigid body in the bullet component. I'm giving the bullet a lifetime of 5, so if it doesn't hit any target in 5 seconds, it's just gonna deactivate. Now let's just rename the object, save it in the prefab folder, and we can delete it from the scene. Lastly, let's drag the newly created prefab under the bullet prefab field in the bullet pool component, and let's try things out. Check! Okay, in game pressing the fire button will cause the gun to shoot a bullet in front of us and holding it down will cause the automatic fire to happen. Now increasing the value of fire speed will increase the delay between the bullets which will be decreased again when we decrease its value. Setting the value of fire speed to something negative will just disable the automatic fire as you can see and we'll be able to shoot as fast as we can press the button. You can now see on the screen some ways you can expand upon the very basic ideas that I've just shown you.
Okay, that was it. It's very, very basic, but you can now see on the screen what you can obtain just by tweaking all the settings and adding a shooting animation for the gun. Okay, so if you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate if you maybe left a like and consider subscribing. And in case you decide to stick around, see you next time.